Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and once again I have JJ here with me. JJ, thanks for stopping by today. As always, thank you for having me. And uh, what we're here to talk about is the Z77 line of motherboards from Asus and more specifically the little ones. So we have uh, the micro ATX version of the P8Z77. This is the P8Z77M Pro. Mm -hmm. We also have the diminutive P8Z77i, which is a mini ITX motherboard. So, JJ, um, when, when, when you folks at ASUS are designing these boards, uh, what sort of challenges do you encounter when you're trying to squeeze all of the hardware from a full-size ATX motherboard into these smaller form factors? Um, you know, that's, that's a great point. Uh, that's the reality is that when you're dealing with a smaller uh, board and you're dealing with generally uh, lower count in terms of PCB, um, there's definitely considerations at how you can try to get all the added controllers, all the functionality you're looking for within a smaller envelope. Now, um, we do have the Maximus series as well that kind of really takes it up to the next level in terms of really bringing every high-level class of component and high-performance level of functionality and more interconnects onto the board. Um, with the Dash M Pro, while this is a small form factor, we still want to keep it feature-rich, but necessarily it doesn't go to the same extent as our high-end desktop uh, boards. Um, the main reason why is that usually with the, like the Dash M Pro, our focus is to give you value connectivity, a lot of expansion, uh, but at the same time not make the price uh, too high. Um, now with the mini ITX side of the fence, we usually notice that we have a lot of people that are interested in having pretty much all those key levels of connections because you're generally not going to have the opportunity to add any expansion to the, to the product. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a look at two small form factor solutions, but that it can definitely go into different environments. I mean, with this type of micro ATX board, it could serve as a great, uh, let's say, a Windows Home Server type of configuration, an actual everyday small form factor box, um, a small form factor lame, uh, gaming system. Um, we're on the other side of the fence with the Mini ITX board. While it gets a lot of focus for HTPC, it could just as very much serve for every kind of key segment that you're also looking for, it, uh, just depending on the amount of expansion that's going to be required uh, for the board. Um, but uh, from there, let's uh, take a look at uh, what we have uh, on each board. All right, let's start with the P8Z77M Pro, uh, mm -hmm. which is the uh, micro ATX board that's right here. And uh, as you can see, it's got the uh, 1155 socket right there. It's got the Z77 chipset. Uh, it was backwards compatible with existing second generation Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors, aka Sandy Bridge. Mm -hmm. Also compatible with the new line of Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors, the third generation also known as Ivy Bridge. Uh, so what are some highlights of this board that you wanted to show us today? So one of the really cool parts is that uh, this is one of really the first generations where we're bringing that high digital power delivery control even into the micro ATX design. So historically, this has been something that only our higher end boards have featured, but we've gone ahead and incorporated the digital um, DigiPlus VRM design on this, as well as our dual intelligent processors design. So we have the flexibility of having that uh, TPU performance and a EPU functionality in terms of reduced power consumption and lower temperatures also capable on this board. So that's a nice plus because it gives us uh, the flexibility of having a very efficient system or even an, a strong little overclocking board as well. So that's a nice plus point. Um, in addition to that, we still maintain a lot of the kind of key premise points that we've discussed in the past, such as, of course, UEFI. We have more advanced fan control functionality available on the board. Um, in terms of special characteristics, if we take a look at the back I.O., We've done some very nice updates. Um, so we have eSATA on the back plane. Those are actually two SATA 6G eSATA ports that are on there, so that's a nice plus. Um, in terms of USB 3 connectivity, we have a lot of expansion uh, ports on here. So in total, this MicroTX port actually has six USB ports, uh, two via an internal front header, and then four ports on the back. So you do have the four ports uh, that are from Intel that can benefit from increased performance through our USB 3 boost pass package, as well as the AS Media USB 3. Um, so you get that flexibility. In terms of the internal connectivity, right, we've got a lot of actually physical by 16 slots. So you have the ability to run Crossfire SLI configurations, and you still have an expansion slot if you want to go ahead and let's say have a even triple slot card and then still go ahead and have a secondary add-in card as well. Maybe it's a sound card, um, you know, a wireless card, any number of different solutions that are available to you. So overall, a very robust and capable board that brings home a lot of the key technologies that we have on our higher end boards, um, but you know, in a more compact uh, board as well as a little bit more price aggressive. And with the Ivy Bridge processor installed here, you also get PCI Express Gen 3. Of course, you have full support for PCI Gen 3. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Um, anything else about this board you wanted to point yeah, out? Yeah, we still also maintain our USB BIOS flashback technology, which is also a nice update to have on a more price aggressive small form factor board. So you're still going to have the capability of actually doing the USB BIOS flashback on this board as well. So a great way to um, update a BIOS, um, make sure you are insured if you're going for an aggressive overclock and you want to roll things back, or in the catastrophic catastrophic event of a corrupted BIOS, you can save it. And uh, I love that you don't have to have a CPU or memory installed. You just got to plug in the power uh, right here and here. And uh, yeah, even for when you're just first setting up the system, like you said, no CPU, no memory, no graphics card, just standby power. And you can go ahead and update the board easily without having to worry about being damaged in the socket or anything like that. Awesome. So, uh, and then for overall serial ETA, just to point out, uh, we got the two eSATA ports there in the back. Then we got the integrated uh, Z77 controlled serial ATA right there, uh, which gives you four SATA Revision 2 ports and two SATA Revision 3 ports. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this does also, in terms of we have a lot of display connectivity on here, this also does support the Lucid MVP package. So you do have access to the QuinkSync technology as well as the updated performance centric functions of Lucid like high performance and virtual vSync. Now, what benefits do you get from the MVP package? Um, well, you have two key premise points that are new, all right? The previous implementation of virtual is very easy to understand, right? If you have a discrete GPU, you can still access the quick sync hardware encoder that's on the actual Ivy Bridge CPU or on the Sandy Bridge CPU. With high performance, it's actually a new, uh, let's say, function that's introduced about helping to improve latency responsing time, uh, latency uh, within games. Um, so essentially, it changes kind of some of the dynamic in terms of the way things get offloaded. So with high performance, you have the ability to have the software essentially adjust texture um, buffering occurs actually on the iGPU, and this frees up the actual GPU discrete part to go ahead and complete more processing. Um, now, there are some restrictions in terms of the way the software works, um, so you do want to look a little bit more deeply into whether the game that you're looking to go ahead and get increased performance from is supported by Lucid, as well as that it can potentially introduce certain other variables into the gameplay. But um, when it works correctly, it can give you actually a reduced level of actually latency or input lag uh, in terms of that. A second one, is virtual vSync, which is really cool if you're using, like, let's say, a small form factor gaming rig. When you normally, let's say, connect to a monitor, you're limited to the refresh rate of the monitor if you enable vSync, um, which is generally going to be 60, uh, 60 hertz. Um, but now for this generation, you can actually enable an internal uh, virtual vSync that will not cap you in terms of the refresh rate based on your monitor. Um, so you can go ahead and essentially have an unlocked maximum refresh rate with no tearing. Um, so this is a very interesting technology that they've made, and you can definitely get more information about this uh, if you visit Lucid Logic's website and take a look at some of the documentation that shows to you how these functions and how these features are working. All right, so even more capability to make use of that integrated GPU that you get in your Ivy Bridge processor. Most definitely. Uh, especially if you're going to be also using a discrete card and uh, the ability to switch back and forth between the two. Yeah. Uh, shall we move on to the mini ITX board? Yeah, definitely. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look here. So we can see that we've got a lot going on on this board, right? It's very, very packed. Um, we've spent a lot of time on this board to really kind of take all the feedback that we've had from the community that's been asking us to kind of continue to push the envelope. We've always been at the forefront of mini ITX innovation in terms of doing the most high-end boards that give you the most connectivity and the most robust expansion. Um, and with that, with Z77, we're kind of really pushing the envelope. The first one that we can see is this uh, entirely raised up daughter board. Um, it's very unique in terms of the actual look of the board. And what that is, is actually the VRM assembly, where normally if we were to have take a look at one of the other boards, like let's say that micro ATX board right next to it, that entire VRM is actually on the motherboard. Um, but what, for this goal for Z77, since it does support overclocking, we didn't want to compromise on the performance potential of this mini ITX solution. So once again, we've incorporated that high performance Digi Plus VRM design, and you have that uh, DigiPlus control for the iGPU, for the DRAM, as well as for the CPU and the VRM assembly, uh, but that's all controlled here. So that's a nice big plus point in terms of this board. And in terms of overclocking performance, I can tell you it pretty much clocks just as good as our deluxe board. Wow. So very impressive that in this small form factor package, you're not going to have any limitations in that. So you got eight phase power delivery right there on the little daughter board. And uh, I like the heatsink too, actually. The heatsink provides a lot of rigidity to it, and actually it is bolted down, yeah. as you can see on either side, as part of the heatsink. So uh, it keeps it pretty sturdy too. Yeah, and we've gone ahead and we went with a slim profile vertical interface so that it doesn't really impact you in terms of using whatever type of low profile or even maybe a, a closed loop water cooling configuration. If you're going with a little bit larger mini ITX chassis, you're not going to really be impacted in terms of this socket area. In terms of what we're looking at in terms of the back, 
uh, we've got a lot of connectivity. I mean, when you take a look there, you can see that we've gone legacy free to make sure to give you the most rich and the current forms of connection. So you've got uh, pretty much all USB ports right here. You've got digital connectivity with an op uh, optical toss link out where we have DTS Ultra 2 PC, um, which gives us DTS Connect for hardware re-encoding for multi-channel audio, which is awesome. We, of course, have HDMI Display Port, um, which is great, especially in an HDPC environment where you can now support 3D uh, internally from the actual iGPU. Very nice. Uh, and also, this uh, platform supports high resolution in terms of the output, so you can have 2516 by 1440 driven um, by the DP interface, so that's a nice plus point as well. Oh, very nice. Uh, moving over to the DVI, right above that, we can see that we have uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. This actually is full dual band, so we have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and Bluetooth all on this motherboard as well. So you have pretty much all your active forms of connectivity that you would want packed into this board right off the get-go. So beautiful for video streaming, for gaming, any, for anything gaming, you want and, to do. And you get the same also moving right next to it. We still keep the high-performance Intel native gigabit on there and that also comes with our packet priority software so the iNetwork control software so you can go ahead and prioritize whether it's for gaming web streaming um, for general web browsing or whatever your network centric service is going to be so we take care of you on both those fronts we want to give you the best experience for the hardwired but also give you a great performance and great functionality from the wireless connectivity and from the USB ports we can see underneath the Intel gigabit and uh, right above the eSATA those are, of course, AS Media and Intel. So in total, the board actually has six USB 3 ports on it. And uh, all of those are, of course, fully supported for our USB 3 Boost technology to enhance the performance further. So four here on the back and one more available via a header, which is right there. Right, and that's right next to the two additional USB 2 headers that are on the board, too. So you can see that pretty much you're going to have as much connections as you would really want. Um, you, know, you know, you're not really limited, even though this is a small form factor capable board. It rivals a lot of full-size ATX boards yeah. in connectivity. Even right below that, you can see that we still then give you two more eSATA ports, which is great, especially if you're using this like in a Windows Home Server environment, um, or as like a, a small portable workstation, or even an HTPC, and maybe you'll have an eSATA enclosure, um, or a high-performance eSATA RAID configuration. Those are really, really great in terms of the performance and throughput that eSATA provides to you, as it's a native protocol interface for of course, uh, SSDs and for mechanical-based hard drives. Uh, are these SATA ports actually controlled also by the Z77 chipset? That's correct. So the internal chipset itself, uh, we have four ports. So we have the two SATA 6G ports on the board and two more 3G ports. And then those four, two external six. ports um, that we're not using, excuse me, two ports that we're not using on the board because of space constraints, we've gone ahead and routed those to the eSATA. So you don't even lose any of your native uh, serial ATA. Yeah, and they do also support hot plug as being that they're also natively part of the chipset. So that's very cool. Beautiful. Uh, right below that, we've got a clear CMOS button and our USB BIOS flashback. So even within this board too, you're not losing that capability to do the no CPU, no memory, no graphics card. Just standby power. Once again, you can easily go ahead and update or recover your UEFI. And I got to say, particularly in a small form factor build when you have literally sometimes no space left over after you get all the hardware in, an external clear CMOS is... Very, very nice to have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you've got a really good tuned UEFI, that makes all the difference in the world because you should have a strong auto recovery in terms of a failed overclock. But mm -hmm. definitely, if you have access to an external clear CMOS, that's a nice plus point. And then, of course, we still keep analog connectivity, uh, which is also powered by that new updated Realtek audio controller chip that we have, uh, which also supports the DTS Ultra 2 PC package that we have on there. So overall, uh, when you add all that up together, there's a really high level of performance and functionality that you have available to the board. And expansion is still really solid. Um, you know, with 90% of the market using only one single graphics card, you know, you could, of course, use this with just the iGPU, but you could still expand utilizing the physical by 16 slot to a full graphics card. You could add in, you know, a, a, an OCT-capable TV tuner, <laughs> a high-performance RAID controller. Really just depends on whatever your usage model is going to be. Um, we still actually have our high-performance T-topology memory design. This board, we've actually already also validated up to 2,800 in terms of the memory frequency. Initial validation was only 2,400, but we have already been able to match 2,800 capable. So with this board, 4.8 gigahertz uh, rated, you know, in terms of air configurations, 2,800 capable, just as good as our desktop ports. Um, but that overall goes to show you a lot of the work that we've done to really make this mini ITX board special. So whether you want to build a small HTPC, which a lot of folks love to get into with the mini ITX builds, or if you really want to go with a full-fledged gaming system, you've got all of the equipment you need necessary. 
the VRMs, uh, you got your overclocking capabilities, got your full-size PCI Express slot there, so you can pop in a discrete graphics card. So a lot of potential with this board. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of different builds yeah. making use of it in different ways. Uh, if you guys want to check out, we have some more videos up uh, on just the ASUS Z77 line in general, as well as a lot of the stuff that they've done to make sure that uh, the boards that they've designed for this chipset and this platform uh, can do everything that they want them to do and everything that you guys want them to do at home. Mm -hmm. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm Paul with Newegg TV. This has been JJ from ASUS. JJ, thank you again for stopping by today. Thank you for having me. And uh, if you guys want to see more, please check out our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.